say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the round parts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled Congratulations, 2020. You made it in an unprecedented times, but you did it. And so we're here to celebrate you. Not only you, your family, your abuela, your abuelo, your tia, everybody that supported you to get to this point. Continue what you're doing. You're doing the best. Serve your community and congratulations. Hello seniors, I'm Maricopa County Supervisor Steve Gallardo and a member of the Phoenix Union High School Governing Board. Let me be the first to congratulate you on this amazing accomplishment. COVID-19 has changed every aspect of our daily lives, including a well-deserved graduation for our seniors. However, this global pandemic will not diminish your accomplishments or derail your future plans. Each of you have earned the right to wear your school cap and gown and become a member of the class of 2020. I encourage you to shoot for the stars. Beyond the walls of your high school lies great opportunities. Take advantage of those opportunities. I also want to thank the parents, families, and friends of all our graduates. If it wasn't for the love and support, today may not have been possible for some of our seniors. So on behalf of the Phoenix Union High School Governing Board, we applaud you on your accomplishments and we wish you the best of luck. Congratulations, class of 2020, you did it. Hello, Dragon Fam, Class of 2020. Congratulations on getting to this point. I know it has not been easy. Please know that your teachers and support staff have been cheering you on and wishing good things for you this past quarter. Thank you for finishing your four years at Bioscience with grace and class. You are a special graduating class to me because you are the first class at Bioscience that I have known freshman year through senior year. I watched you come in to bioscience at the end of your eighth grade summer Dragon Academy, a little intimidated, a little overwhelmed, and not sure what you had gotten yourselves into. I watched you as you play icebreaker games with the seniors that year, and then look at you four years later, you were leading groups of eighth graders for their introduction to bioscience. You are a very brave class of students. Even from your freshman year, when you took a chance, you put yourselves out there, you opened up to your teachers and your fellow classmates, you accepted a heavy workload, extra projects, more responsibility at bioscience, but you shined and you grew over four years and you represented our school well. Whether you were competing in robotics, performing in our music club, volunteering in Key Club or NHS, performing in Poetry Aloud, competing in the Olympic Games or Spirit Weeks, serving in as, as an ambassador of our school for eighth grade visits, creating an accessible games for students that excel, performing the play Open Doors, or completing four years of STF Better World Project. We made you work hard and you stood up and accepted the challenge. 
You were a brave class when you learned you would not be coming back to school to finish your senior year. There is nothing fair or right about that. But you accepted what you needed to do, did your best to take care of each other. And for that, you are to be commended. It may not feel like there is an upside to going without, to experiencing something that almost breaks you. But I would argue that the best people walking our planet are people who have. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, an award-winning author said, the most beautiful pe people we have known are those who have known defeat, known suffering, known struggle, known loss, and have found their way out of the depths. These people have an appreciation, a sensitivity, an understanding of life that fills them with compassion, gentleness, and a deep loving concern. Beautiful people do not just happen. This is not to say that you will face a life of adversity. You will enjoy good times again. You will be reunited with friends, family, and groups of people. You will thrive in college and learn more about yourselves than you ever thought possible. You'll make friends and new acquaintances, even with professors. You will travel and see life and the beauty around the world. Life will open up again, and you will use these strengths from this period to be an even better version of yourself than if you never had the challenge. I'm proud of you, class of 2020. Remember bioscience, remember us, and use what you learned here to make your life a good one. Take a chance, put yourself out there for a new adventure. Use the perseverance and personal growth to reach out to others to show kindness where it is needed. And remember, you always have family at bioscience. Congratulations, graduates. We are so proud of you. Hello, graduation class of 2020. I am Governing Board Member Ross, and I'm so honored to be a part of this graduation ceremony with you. I want you to know that I fully understand that when you entered school, this is not how you envisioned celebrating your years of hard work, dedication, and determination. And I want you to know that myself and my fellow board members, as well as everyone at the district, we are very, very proud of you. You have shown resilience that no other class has had to exude. You have made it through a time that none of us have had to live through. And we are so very proud of you for making it through this. And we want you to celebrate that huge, huge accomplishment. I want you to know that despite not having graduation look like you expected, that you still have every reason to celebrate all of the hard work you've done over the years. And I also want you to know that this is only the beginning of a long and amazing life that you have in front of you. There will be so many more times for you to celebrate your accomplishments, loved ones' lives. There will be so many times for you to gather with friends and family. And I just want you to remember that moving forward. As you journey upon going into college and into career and whatever life has in store with you, I want you to know that we, as uh, Phoenix Union, your family are always here for you. Reach out to us with any questions or concerns. And we're so grateful to have had to spend time with you and to been able to help you during this short period of life. And we are so looking forward to seeing all the great things that we know each of you will do in your embarkment upon the adult world. Congratulations, class of 2020. Hello class of 2020, families and friends. Welcome to your very own pandemic graduation. Little did I know that when we read the hot zone in biomed last year and talked about the 1918 Spanish influenza pandemic, that this year we would be experiencing our very own disease outbreak and pandemic, but more on that later. Let's talk a little about you first. As freshmen, you were nervous, unsure, maybe scared, and some of you were ready to give up or change schools. But something in you, maybe inspired by your parents or by your life situation, sparked and grew to a desire to push yourself to become a better learner and a better person. By the time you were upperclassmen, you were the most collaborative group of students I can remember having at Bioscience. 
It didn't matter if you were in the engineering pathway or the biomedical pathway. You worked together and formed common, shared experiences. One of those experiences included a very challenging, and for some of you, a very cold, backpacking trip junior year. I still remember the look on D'Angelo's face when we learned there were no tents or tarps to sleep under at night. This year you organized holiday gift exchanges, had a senior movie night, and created an awesome time capsule. You selflessly helped each other with college and scholarship essays and encouraged each other to share and perform personal stories. I have also heard amazing things about your retreat to Camp Tontazona last fall. After watching your senior showcase videos, I can see that the class of 2020 has grown into a family that supports and upholds each other with love, compassion, and acceptance. Throughout these last four years, many of you have persevered through difficult personal times and have come out stronger. Many of you have grown as learners and as leaders. This year, I was a recipient of your creativity, Geo. I love the envelope of things you gave me last fall of your generosity, thanks for the Valentine's Day cookie, Jen. Of your dedication, Malia was my personal volleyball bodyguard, and of your love and friendliness that you showed all year long. Senioritis was a real thing for most of you pre-pandemic. I can't imagine what being quarantined did to that. Did you watch all of the Tiger King episodes? Make TikTok videos? Play Minecraft or Animal Crossing? I'm sure sleep schedules were severely disrupted. I heard that Merced is growing an epic beard and Anastasia and Julian have intense hair dyes. Some of you took up drawing, jewelry making, bike riding, healthy eating, and caring for kittens. Some of you made pretty good use of your quarantine time by taking online classes, applying for scholarships, and preparing your showcase videos. A few of you have plans to start your own business and you held your own virtual prom. How cool is that? What will your next chapter in life look like? Whether you are going to college, the military, or straight into work, it's up to you to make the most of it. While this pandemic has brought a lot of challenges, some sadness, and a sense of isolation, it has also brought new experiences and opportunities. Things will be different going forward, and you will be pioneers in uncharted territory. But that will give you an advantage to set new expectations and rules. Be a leader, others will follow. I want to close with a quote from the author Roy T. Bennett. Difficulties and adversities viciously force all their might on us and cause us to fall apart, but they are necessary elements of individual growth and reveal our true potential. Remember that every challenge, every adversity contains within it the seeds of opportunity and growth. We have got to endure and overcome them and move forward. Never lose hope. Storms make people stronger and never last forever. Remember that pandemics also make people stronger and do not last forever. Our bioscience mission states that we will cultivate critical thinkers, creative problem solvers, and compassionate citizens who are able to thrive in our increasingly complex world. Now is the real life test. Now it is up to you to make the best of this new and different world. Each of you is worthy of this challenge and I believe in you. I will miss you but I am proud of you and I have confidence that you, the class of 2020, will be the ones to lead us forward into the future. Congratulations. Hello fellow graduates, teachers, staff, friends, and family. For those of you who may not know me, my name is Susan Wong. I am very excited to be delivering the first ever commencement speech through video. Despite all our visions and expectations, we are not having a normal high school graduation ceremony, nor are we having one via Minecraft or Roblox. Some of us are worrying about our summer. Some of us are worried about our first semester of college and am I really paying 80k a year for online classes. Regardless of these strange circumstances, Nothing can diminish how special today is, or lessen all of the moments and memories leading up to this one. In these four years, bioscience has become our home, and this class a family. A family who, every morning, dreaded climbing up the stairs. A family who got lectured at for forgetting our IDs. A family who the Heisels told stories about Marlo to. A family who brought cake on each other's birthdays. 
a family who, when classmates left for a brief time, commemorated them and even hung their photos in the hall, and who rejoiced in their return. A family who played basketball and volleyball during lunch and sometimes not when we were supposed to. A family whose security told to leave at the end of the day. A family who said to their friends, let's do something new after school, but end up doing the exact same thing because change is scary. A family who we could count on seeing every day. A family whom we called home, because that's what we mean to each other. Little did we know, before spring break, these small moments between us would be the last they ever happened. Even with such an abrupt end, these memories live on within us. And I'll not soon forget the people and the lessons I've learned during my time here. Our experience at Bioscience opened our eyes to the world around us. Even when we weren't in the classroom, we found these opportunities in even the most mundane of experiences. I remember I rode the bus home late one afternoon when a lady in front of me decides to video call someone. Holding her phone up, she let the entire bus hear her conversation. Meanwhile, I was trying to finish my essay that was due the next day. Why couldn't she have sat somewhere farther than me? Or better yet, just not have decided to FaceTime anyone. After all, I was sure I wasn't the only person on the bus who didn't want to hear this. At this point, the children in her call started squealing. Exasperated, I closed Google Docs on my phone and opened up Spotify in hopes of drowning out the noise. Suddenly, I heard a young girl's voice, no older than four, say, Are you coming home, Mama? I froze for a second, taken aback by the child's pleading yet hopeful tone. The woman replied, yes, baby, I'll be there soon, very soon. At that moment, I felt selfish thinking that my peace of mind was more important than what was probably the first time that mother spoke with the kids that day. Maybe she just had a long day at work and found peace in seeing and speaking with her kids whom she loved. We live our lives thinking we're the star of our own show and that every little thing caters to us and our feelings. But that's just not the case. In the split second the woman on the bus entered my field of awareness, I had unintentionally made up a story about her, that she was inconsiderate, an inconvenience to my day. But when I took the time to understand her situation, it shifted my whole perspective of the moment. In the midst of this pandemic, it's easy to feel lost or out of control. Since 2020 started, it's been one crisis after another. But just as I subconsciously made up that judgment about the woman on the bus, control is another illusion, a story we tell ourselves to make us feel better. The truth is, our cognitive biases make it so we desire control of the world around us. Just as I wanted to control the situation on the bus and for the woman to stop talking. Much of the things in our life that happen are neither controllable nor predictable the family you were born into, the people you sat with that first day of school, a rainy day leading up to a car accident, an opportunity you heard about last minute, a global pandemic which put your life on hold. In the bigger picture, control is an illusion, but the choices you make as an individual are worth more than trying to exert control over other people or outside forces. This can mean many things, such as Choosing to stay up all night, talking to your friend until there's light out. Preparing your outfit for the next day. Saying thank you to your mom the next time she cooks your favorite dish. Tidying up your desk space. Choosing what media you consume. Setting up goals and then taking steps towards accomplishing them. Do what makes you happy and these small choices pile up in the end. While the future remains unforeseeable, the present is clear and what you do is completely up to you. Thank you to my friends for keeping me humble and for having a good laugh. Thank you to my family for giving me something to look forward to on holidays and breaks. Thank you to my teachers who put up with our insanity and remind us every day to try our best. Thank you to staff for helping us when we're in need. Thank you to Mr. Small for teaching us how to invest and for showing us the way of Mary Pete. Thank you, Mr. Johnson, for sharing your stories and indulging us in interesting facts about cranes. Thank you to Mr. Heisel for making us feel heard and taking the time to be real with us.
Thank you to Mrs. Ferlano and Ms. Heisel for being our school moms and showing us unconditional support. Thank you to the Haggerties for believing in us and pushing us to go to college presentations and test prep. Thank you to Jen, Mr. Heisel, and Ms. Penner for planning the senior trip. Thank you to our class reps, Ash and Diana Quintana, for keeping up the class unity through one of the worst senior itises ever. Thank you to all of our science family for being there for us every step of the way. I know we weren't the easiest class, but I'm sure we were the most fun. Seniors, I'm so proud of each of you. In our four years, we've accomplished so much. Many of us are among the first in our family to go to college. Evening of the Arts was the first time you ever performed with a band. Journeying to Alaska was the first time you left Arizona and you kayaked across the ocean while you were at it. You ventured outside of your comfort zone. You wrote a play, memorized a poem, and performed it in front of the entire school. You were vulnerable and you told your story to your classmates that may have been the first time you shared with others. You sang and played guitar by a campfire surrounded by those you loved. You pulled yourself back from the edge multiple times. You made a difference in kids' lives through Excel and your STFs. You discovered parts of yourself you never knew before. You helped your class not be last place during the Olympic Games. You understood, for the first time, your importance in a community and the many ways in which you contribute. Class of 2020, you have made my four years at Bio truly one of the best four years of my life. I'm so grateful for everything Bio has given me and for my wonderful class reminding me we can do anything we set our minds to. Whether that's finding the cure to cancer, or fighting for civil rights, or solving climate change, or founding the next best aerospace company. As Mr. Heisel once put it, bite off more than what you can chew, and then chew it. For now, we're known as the class of COVID-19. But in time, we'll be known as the class who changed the world. Congratulations, and I wish you all more than the best. Hello, my name is D'Angelo Brown, and I've had the greatest opportunity this year to be the student body president in Bioscience High School. But firstly, I would like to give a warm welcome to the Dragons, families, teachers, staff, and most importantly, parents who can now close their eyes and take a deep breath. We are finally graduating after four long years of Bioscience High School. Words that I've been so excited to say, and also words that many of us have been dreading. I mean, what a high school experience, right? I'm sure the parents have heard a lot about it. Today is the day that we finally close this chapter in our lives and return to the drawing board and write the rest of our life story. Yes, that's wild, but unfortunately we do have to embark on this new journey, a new story of these new beginnings. and. This time there is no script for us to follow. We hold the pen and paper and we're the ones making the decisions. We're the ones making the calls. And this means that we're growing up. We have to grow up a little bit, you know? Start paying bills, think about taxes, insurance, all of that jazz, but I don't know. Most importantly, what we'll be thinking about from now on is how we're gonna be our best selves, how we're gonna meet our aspirations in life, how we're gonna go for our dreams, how we're gonna keep on doing the things that make us happy. And we'll, we'll be finding our purpose in life. For many of us, that's gonna be easy, and many of us, that's gonna be very difficult. But with confidence, I can say that it's never impossible, especially for the class of 2020. We are very, very capable students, and all of you, all of you should know that. Our class has been tested a number of times, but we have somehow remained resilient through it all. We have risen to every single occasion. Olympic Games, we lost every year, but guess what? That never changed us being the best class that bioscience has ever had. We might have not been there physically, but everything else, we were. Um, there's no doubt that the teachers agree with that too, but that's another story. <laughs> we have always been that class and now we are that class that is experiencing um, some unexpected things. We never thought we would be separated the last few months of our senior year 
because of a global pandemic. We started off spring break thinking things were all chill, there were good vibes, without the intention to stay home for the next two months into quarantine. And we were fooled. And little did I know that I would miss sitting with my friends every lunchtime in advisory, or hearing moiku, or ho huh, huh, or yes sir, or the stories that we would listen to during story time in math class in Mr. Johnson's. But oddly, the one silver lining that I can take from this is that I think we were chosen for a reason. We were able to rewrite what the world had planned for us. And we were able to find ways to persevere and overcome these obstacles, you know? We did the virtual meetings. We did the online classes. We did the social distancing six feet apart. You know, remember guys, six feet apart. We are able to do this and I would definitely not do this again. I would definitely not like to revisit this, but we really did get through this. Look at you guys. And this only made our bond as a class unforgettable and has taught us to make sure to keep our loved ones closer and to make sure that we are always remaining connected. Also not to, also not to take things that are deemed as normal for granted. The relationships we have created will not be broken and I know that they won't not they will not be broken. And we simply care too much for them to be broken. Okay, enough about how corona I don't know. This is enough about corona because honestly I'm exhausted by the thought of it. And I'm sure you guys are too, so I'll do you guys a service. So moving on. So now I want to talk about how many of us have adapted to working at a fast pace crunching everything down at the last minute, sometimes even seconds. I know you've done it before. Come on, we're all bioscience students. We're all guilty. All right, I know you guys have done this in the magazine, STF presentations, essay assignments, physics. We tried, but I don't know what happened there. But some of us will say bioscience students work well under pressure, but little do they know that we have to because procrastination hits hard and those time management classes freshman year, they really did not go well. And I would like to slow things down a bit. Take it, take it down a few notches, you know, and give us a chance to rewind because we're so used to moving on at a fast pace. We're not really good at recognizing the past and how it has made us the people we are today. For one hard assignment to the next, we moved on so quickly. So I like to throw it back a little bit, you know. As freshmen coming into bioscience high school, we did not know what we were getting ourselves into. I mean, we kind of did because we we're given books to read and assignments to write before the first day of school, but we we're truly unaware of the challenges, relationships, triumphs, and even failures we would experience the next four years of our lives. And I can say that with so much confidence that we have built all of those things throughout these four years. And now I visualize all of us doing icebreakers in Dragon Academy, making a fool out of ourselves, squeaky voices, pubescent bodies, baby faces, fidget spinners and all. We weren't nay naying and whipping though. We were, we were strangers and I was worried about how I fit in, but little did I know that the next couple of months that I'd be worrying about hearing the Vega bus is coming every Friday. I hated that song and I think many of us did too. But many of us now have grown to love it because of how many memories that we have created because of it. If I could go back in time, I would first tell myself or my freshman self to stop being ugly and annoying. But second, I would tell them to cherish every moment and to treat it as if it were the last. Because now looking back, these four years really did sneak up on us. Like really did sneak up on us. Like quarter grade and semester grade sneak up on us. Like it was that quickly. I would also like to talk about a huge part of our four-year story about science, and that would be the teachers for making it all happen. They're, they're the ones that put us through the torture because some of those assignments were brutal. You can't even lie. When you guys assigned us five assignments due on one day, come on, guys. But the class in 2020 will always miss you and will never forget you in being such driving forces in our teenage years. We learned a lot from you in class and outside of it. Many of us felt that we could talk to you about anything and you made us feel comfortable. We always had to wait a vent and let off steam because you guys were always there. You know, you know how to help us at our 
rock bottom is pretty much facing ACT, finals, testing, relationships, life. You guys were always right there to help us out our rock bottoms. Even though we were kind of troublemakers at times, I don't remember Miss Kenobi getting mad at us for not getting in our right brain, whatever that means, or Mr. Washburn exploding because we weren't paying attention to him. So he threw the little cards across the classroom or Small telling us to get off our phones because we weren't listening to him. And now recently, Mr. Heisel getting mad at us and breaking out his pettiness because we were reading his assignments. For the most part, our students were pretty PG, but we also knew how to have fun. And I really am going to miss you guys. Bioscience, home of the double helix dragons. A weird mascot that I, yeah, a weird mascot, but I'll always hold pride with it forever. As president, I will miss planning homecoming prom and spirit weeks for everyone. And I'm so thankful that I was able to take lead in planning these events. We will all remember as adults and be able to tell to our children. As a student, I would like to wish everyone the best and I don't know, the best of health for you and your families, especially during these times and to cherish all the moments you have with the ones you care most about. Do not forget about the people that have got you where you were when you go move on into college because they want to see you succeed. They love you. I hope that each and every senior continues to show their fullest potential after this day. After all, leaders, icons, activists, celebrities to look up to started off as average people. Even though us bioscience students aren't average people, we're kind of above average. And I would just like to say they all had a dream and they all had an urge to achieve greatness in life. And after four years of judgment, I know that anything you set your mind to is feasible. I can't wait to hear your story. You embark on the next chapters in your life. Please do tell, you know I'm nosy. And I would just like to end off with, thank you. Thank you for being my classmates. Thank you for giving me this experience that I will remember forever. So congratulations, my fellow class of 2020. We did it and I'm so proud of you guys. Good evening, Bioscience Class of 2020 graduates, and congratulations to you all for this exciting achievement. Please make sure to thank your family and your friends for their important role in helping you to reach this point. While this is certainly a difficult time for our community and for the nation as a whole, I am excited about the opportunity to make the most of tonight's experience with you. You see, you and I, we share a special bond a bioscience bond. After all, we both walked through that front gate for the first time in the summer of 2016, a little bit anxious about starting something new. What would this small high school in the center of the city have in store for us over the next several years? Did I make the right choice when I signed up to come here? How do I get access to the rooftop swimming pool? Is the belt system broken? Why is the fire alarm so loud? What is an STF? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Explain to me again. What is an STF? I want you to know that I am so proud of the growth you've made in the various aspects of your lives over these past four years. Whether it be personally or academically, You've taken advantage of the opportunities presented to you and have grown from those annoying, awkward, fidgety little freshmen that I tried to avoid running into as I made my way up and down the cheese grater staircase to these amazing, fantastic seniors that I so enjoy conversing with on a daily basis. Your experience has been truly transformational. And while this is definitely not the moment you imagined as you thought about graduation night walking into bioscience high school for the first time four years ago, or even as you were sitting in class four months ago, I want you to know that this in no way diminishes your accomplishment. One of the reasons this is a bit difficult for me is that I can honestly say in the 15 years that I've taught high school seniors, you are without question one of my all-time favorite classes. And although I'm a bit sad that you were unable to experience the final semester of high school as it was intended, 
I know that this adversity will make you stronger. My advice to you, do everything possible in your control not to let this tragedy somehow define you in a negative way and impede progress on your path to greatness. My expectations of you remain sky high, as you all are fantastic individuals with so much to offer the future. And just think, in four years from now, when this is hopefully past us and you're all full of anticipation of the next major milestone in your life as you file into that grand venue with your cap and gown on once again and your family and friends watching from the stands, what interesting stories you'll have to swap with your fellow class of 2024 college graduates. Wow, what an awesome moment to look forward to. But back to the present. As you are about to achieve this milestone during a time of distress, please remember that you are just beginning your adult lives and you have so much to look forward to and so much to accomplish. And remember, you and I, we share that bond as we'll now both leave Bioscience High School together and together jump back into that pool of anxiety and uncertainty mixed with excitement as we both move on to our next endeavor. But above all, just know that without reservation, I have the utmost confidence in your ability to be successful in whatever path you take. Thank you for the great honor of allowing me as your teacher to have a small impact on your lives. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to end my teaching career on the ultimate high note with the class of 2020. Please try to keep in touch as I will definitely miss you all a great deal. Congratulations, Bioscience Class of 2020. Now, go forth and prosper. Hi, my name is Stephanie Barra and I'm the school board president here at Phoenix Union High School District. Class of 2020, first and foremost, I hope that this video message finds you safe and well. Under normal circumstances, I would be standing in front of you in my own graduation gown and shaking your hands while handing you your high school diploma. Our sad reality is that it's not safe to do so at the moment because of the coronavirus pandemic. I want you to know that I'm truly sorry for the current state of affairs. And while this video message will never replace that experience for you and your family, my hope is that I can share a little bit of optimism for the future that I see through you. This is now my sixth round of graduations at Phoenix Union. And every year I've grown more inspired and encouraged by the graduates of the district. Your generation is bold and fearless and you demonstrate time and time again that no matter what challenges are presented you will rise above and persevere. You are now part of the wonderful alumni network of Phoenix Union, an incredible group of leaders who are making a difference in our local community and our national network as well. You are the reason why I stay hopeful and optimistic about the future of our state and country, even in the midst of a global pandemic. Over the last six years, you all have inspired me to be a better person and a stronger leader for our community. I know that you will be the ones who ensure that we live in a more just and peaceful world. I know this because you are not merely high school graduates. You are leaders. So I'm asking you to go out into the world and lead fearlessly, compassionately, and respectfully. Class of 2020, we love you, we miss you, we wish you absolute success in everything that you do, and always know that Phoenix Union is here to support you and your families. Congratulations, Class of 2020. Congratulations, Phoenix Union High School District 2020 graduates. We are so proud of you for your perseverance, your hard work in an especially difficult year. We are so sorry that we're not going to be having our traditional graduation ceremonies, 
but we hope to have a big party in the fall or late summer. Thank you, 2020 grads. We celebrate you, we love you, and we know you're going in beautiful places, and we're here to help support you doing that. Thank you. Good evening, class of 2020. I've never given a virtual speech before today, so I was pretty plagued with how to approach this. I thought of doing something cutesy where I hold up signs, my speech written out, a soundtrack of dramatic music during which I actually don't say a word in an attempt to make you tear up. But who am I if not a talker? I also considered the run of the mill family is defined as speech, but that just felt lame and you don't deserve lame. I hope that what I finally landed on here will communicate how special you are to me and so many others and that you receive the adoration I am sending. I was honored to find out in February that I was selected to speak at your graduation. I was immediately excited by the prospect of getting to explain my love for you as individuals, as a community, and as a family. I had so many ideas about what I wanted to say to you, what I wish for your future and the people I know you'll become. Then things were thrown wildly off track and irreparably changed. It goes without saying that our final year of bioscience did not end the way you deserve for it to end. We did not have the chance to celebrate you and your accomplishments among those admissions to colleges, massive scholarships, decisions about what you'd study and not study. We didn't get the chance to dance at prom, play games at senior night, talk about how weird it would be not to see each other at the start of the next school year. And most importantly, we didn't have the opportunity to talk about how your class has left an indelible mark on the bioscience community. So with all that said, let's do that now. Let's pretend we are on a stage looking at each other in our finest graduation attire, huge nervous smiles with zero thought about where we wish we were if things were different. Let's imagine each hug, each selfie, every balloon, every tassel. You are not just any group of 78 kids who went to high school together. You are the class of 2020 from Bioscience High School in the heart of downtown Phoenix. When I think about our school, I think about your presence. I think about ultimate Smash Bros battles, fashion shows, references to memes and SpongeBob. I think about the art you made that still hangs on the walls all over the campus. I think about little caricature drawings strewn around two east and long discussions about life and those of us who had lots of feelings about those topics. I remember seeing you as freshmen, watching you evolve into adults who have found their artistic and academic voices. I think about the vulnerability you've exhibited with each other and your teachers. I feel especially lucky to have had the opportunity to camp with you, play games with you, and see all of your no talent talents. When I think of the class of 2020, I think of a group of people that performed and hosted a wedding ceremony for their two junior teachers so that we could forever remain as legitimate work wives. I think about the first ever Olympic Games banner with the focal point being cartoon versions of your junior teachers. You've never seen six teachers feel more honored and loved than in that moment. And on the perimeter of all of these wonderful moments and experiences, you have so many attributes that cannot go unmentioned. You are thinkers, writers, artists. You question and advocate you create and shape. You are passionate and courageous. When you've struggled, you've done it in the most beautiful way possible, which is to know within yourselves that you will be stronger, more resilient, and more capable on the other side. I am certain that you will have doubts about your ability to achieve what it is you want to do for yourself, but I hope you know that you will be completely alone in those doubts, that you will have many, many others who know exactly how you'll do and what you'll accomplish when all is said and done. I mean, hey, you got through STF, you can get through anything. So as I wrap up my speech, and as we pretend we are all together on a big, bright stage, know that Mr. Heisel and I are giving each of you hugs, congratulatory handshakes. We are telling your families how fun it has been to know you all these years. Our cheeks hurt from smiling at you, and we are wiping tears from our faces at the thought of not seeing you in August. We love you and are endlessly proud and honored to have you in our lives. Congratulations, class of 2020.
I was scared of dentists and the dark I was scared of pretty girls and starting conversations All my friends are turning green Yeah, the magician's assistant in their dream Oh, Outside forces. Much of the things in our lives are neither. Hi, yeah. Mimi, why are you laughing? I'm not laughing. They can hear you. <laughs> they can hear you. <laughs> I got this. Is it is it cook it? Yeah. You should thank you. You should do this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Whether that's finding the cure to cancer, or fighting for civil rights, or solving climate change, or founding the next best aerospace company, as Mr. Heisel once said. Bite off more than what you can chew, and then chew it. For now, we're known as the class of COVID-19. But in time, we'll be known as the class who changed the... Yeah. <laughs> okay, for now, we're known as the class of COVID-19. Pause two seconds. But in time, but in time, we'll be known as the class who changed the world. Serious face. <laughs> Good? Okay. 